Okay, so the part we're doing today is called dimensional analysis. And I'll be honest, I've not always liked doing this, but I actually like it a lot now. So hopefully I can show it to you so it makes sense and you won't hate it as much either. We are going to start off with a problem where we're converting from pints to quarts. What's really important to know about these ratios is they, their labels are as important as the numbers. And we use the labels to help us set up the dimensional analysis. So if I have 12 pints, and I want to convert it from pints to quarts. I'll be honest, this is one of the things that I used to not like about this. If you don't know what that is, it can be frustrating because now you have to go figure out what is the conversion. Sometimes our book tells you, and sometimes you might just want to go Google it really quickly. Um, I can tell you right now, the conversion is that there is one quart in two pints. One quart and two with two or two pints in one quart. It's the other way around. Let's change this word to two, and it's a ratio. So when we're doing these, we write what's called a conversion ratio to make the conversion. And the conversion ratio here is going to be one quart over two pints. And these aren't proportions, because proportions we would put an equal sign in between. We're converting using multiplication. So there's going to be a multiplication sign in between what I'm starting with and my conversion ratio. That means since I'm now going to multiply like I'm multiplying a fraction, this has to be over an invisible one, and we're going to make it visible. Because I'm converting from pints to quarts, I want to get rid of the words, labels, pints. And I want to be left with just quarts. So I kind of want to keep an eye on that. This is the label that I want. I can cross off labels in converting once I have one in the numerator and one in the denominator. That'll make it really important as we're setting up problems because you have to pay attention to where does it start to know where to put its conversion. And I'll show you in another problem in a minute, so this makes more sense as we go. Once you've crossed those out and you've kept the label you want, now you can just multiply the numbers. We have 12 times 1 quart over 1 times 2. We multiply straight across. Everything you know about multiplying fractions stays the same here. 12 times 1 is going to be 12. 1 times 2 is going to be 2, and that simplifies down to 6 quarts. And that's our answer. We went from pints to quarts. Will it make you happy to know I'm doing three examples with you and then you only have five problems? Okay. So our next example is quarts to gallons. My water bottle here is a quart. Now you know there's two pints in there, right? But what's the opposite? Now we're going from this, this is the smaller size to a gallon. How many of these are in a gallon? There's four. So you guys know the conversion ratio for this one because a quart is a quarter, right? This one makes sense. So if we're going to go from quarts to gallons, we know our conversion is going to be, well, first let's start off. I'm going to tell you, you have six quarts. That six quarts is going to turn into a ratio just by showing its invisible one underneath. What symbol do we put between? 
multiplication. multiplication. And then we're going to make a conversion ratio. Quartz is on the top here, so in my conversion ratio, it has to be on the opposite and be in the denominator. And if I'm converting from quartz to gallons, that means the gallons has to be on the top. You're kind of mapping out your problem as you go. And then you put in the facts that you know about the numbers. In one gallon, there's four quarts. As soon as I have quarts in there twice, one in the numerator and one in the denominator, I can delete them. Because I'm trying to convert away from them and change my measurement to gallons. Gone, gone, what's left? And I'm going to just show six times one is six, one times four is four, and I get six over four gallons, which is equal to one and a half. Oops, and I went off screen, sorry about that. Okay, <clears throat> now stretch your muscles because we're going to do two conversion fractions in our last one. Con conversion ratios. This one is a word problem. I'm going to read it to you. Do you have to write it? Nope. But I'm going to model with you how to write it when you're reading them in a minute, okay? The problem says a cyclist travels 56 miles in four hours. What famous ratio are we hearing there? Miles per hour. How would we set that up? Miles over hours. And I'll read it again. A cyclist travels 56 miles in four hours. Use dimensional analysis to convert the cyclist speed to feet per second. So our answer has to be in feet per second. I want you to notice what I just did as I read it. They tell you the ratio that we want at the end. If you write it, it helps you set up your ratios as you go. Because feet is going to have to be in the top, and seconds is going to have to be in the bottom. bottom. We're going to need two conversion ratios here. The first one is going to be turning miles into feet. Miles is in the numerator here, so in its conversion ratio, it has to be in the, yep. And feet would go up here, and it matches our answer, right? What's going to have to be in the bottom for the second conversion ratio? And what was in the original? And notice, hour was down below, but we're going to move the hour part up here. And then we're going to fill it in with the numbers that we know, or the numbers you have to go look up, because if you don't teach math, you may not know that there's 5,280 feet in one mile. What? A fact I just happen to know. What? 5,280 feet, one mile. Google helps, right? You shouldn't have to memorize these things if it's something you can go look up. You guys can figure out the you can figure out the seconds though. Sixty seconds in one minute. How many minutes in one hour? So we have to do sixty times sixty. It's three thousand six hundred seconds in in one hour. Before I can multiply, I need to go and cross off my labels and make sure that all I'm left with is feet and seconds. Do I have two miles? One numerator, one denominator. Do I have two hours? One numerator, one denominator. Now I'm left with some big numbers. 56 times 5,280 feet over four times 3,600 seconds. You multiply those, you divide those, you get your answer. 
which I happened to do earlier today, so I'll just tell you what it is. Two, nine, five, comma, six, eight, zero feet. Yes, you can use Yes, you can use a calculator to do this. Wow, that's a big number. That's a huge number, right? But guess what it comes down to? Twenty point five feet per second. Oh my god. So the conversion ratio is helping you get rid of the labels and change the number to the new measurement. You guys are going to have, like I said, exactly five problems. When you finish these, I would like to see people going to Khan Academy and working on your eighth grade pathway. Okay.